Hello and welcome back to Dynamic CCTV's technical blog. In this video we're going to go through configuring the DDNS on the recorder on the app and also through some of the playback options. So the two main benefits of configuring the DDNS on the app is you get a more streamlined connection to the recorder which might not seem important but if you've got a subpar network speed uh, this can greatly improve your actual streaming and also it gives you the fast forwarding in the playback. Just to give you an example if I go into the playback now, which is the icon in the top right hand corner with the play button with the arrow just curved around it, click that there. If we click that drop down and just quickly select the camera and start the playback, once it pulls that through, if you see we go across, this option here with the times one in a square is greyed out and this one here for HD is also greyed out. Uh, once you've done the manual report forwarding, you get these options and it works no problem. So if we come out there, on the front page of Hick Connect, if we put our finger on the drop down arrow on the right, if you can see there, that's the drop down arrow, it gives you all the cameras. If we put our finger there and just drag it over to the left, we're keeping our finger on the screen, it gives us two icons. The circles icon is a share icon, and the cog is the settings icon. If we select that cog, that takes us into the settings itself for the recorder. What we're looking at here is the configured DNS near the bottom of the screen. As you can see, it says not set, so if we want to go in there and we want to put in a device domain name, which can be anything you want it to be, uh, it can't be under six characters and it can't start with a capital. So as we're going to put test REC for test recorder, the part mapping mode by default is automatic, but what you want to do is you want to manually change it over to manual, because that's what the parts have been doing, they've been set to manual, so you want to make it manual. So on the server port number, by default on the recorder, it is 8000, and for the HTTP port number, it is 80. But if the sites had to change this information, for example, if those ports weren't available, then you'll want to just change it to whatever it needs to be. So for example, 8000 can be 8001, or 9000, and HTTP port can be 81, or 90. That's not a problem. So once you put that information in there, you have to put in the username and the password. So the username will be the admin, username so you put admin in there if you've got guest accounts sub accounts anything like that it's always going to be the admin information for something like this and once you've typed that in you want to then put in the admin password just so it correctly brings that information through so once you've typed in that password you want to click the eyelash to ensure that the information is correct uh, as long as the information is correct you can just go ahead and click the floppy disk in the top right hand corner which is the save button so if we click that save option as we can see there, it had a little bit of a loading screen, but then it's saved. So now you've done that information, there is not set, it is gone off the configured EDNS. You can double check that information is all still in there. Uh, if we come out by clicking the back arrow in the top left hand corner, come out again by doing the same thing. If we now go into the playback, click the drop down and select the camera we want and start playback, it pulls through that information. But if we also drag and scroll the icons over, we have the times one icon which is the fast forwarding and slowing down of time. We've got all those options in there. We can put it to standard speed, times four, times eight, an eighth of the speed, half speed, whatever you want it to be, whatever suits what you're trying to do. So we can select the speed we want, and if you've got different streaming, you can change that from clear to your custom dependent. If, you've, if you're recording substream, then you can have the playback and substream, but if you're just recording a mainstream like standard, that you don't need to look at that. So yeah, that's all there is for this really. Uh, that's the most benefits of the configuring DDNS. It helps with the streaming on the recorder, uh, on the Hit Connect, and it helps with the playback. That's all for this video. However, we will be covering further Hit Connect topics in the future, so stay tuned for those.